Hi there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to lesson number seven. Now when you switch on a light bulb in your home at night, did you know that that light bulb is wired and parallel to many other appliances in your home? Let me show you what I mean. Well here is my light bulb and look at all the different appliances that this light bulb could be connected in parallel with. A radio, a television set, a fan, a fridge, and even a washing machine. Now parallel circuits are very useful. You can allow current to pass down one branch of the circuit and stop it from passing down another branch just by switching the appliance on or off. We have found that this cannot happen in a series circuit. The difference between a series circuit and a parallel circuit is the way in which the components are connected. In a parallel circuit, there are several paths for the electric current to pass through. Look at this animation. In a series circuit, all the electrons flowed through the components in order. In a parallel circuit, the electrons flow through both the resistor and the light bulb in parallel all at the same time. Do you see that some of the electrons go through the resistor and some go through the light bulb? At point A, the total current splits up and takes different paths before the circuit joins back together again at point B. Remember that a parallel circuit exists when two or more components are connected together between the same two points. Those two points in this circuit are points A and B. Both resistors connect to points A and B. Each parallel path is called a branch of the parallel circuit. Today, we will investigate the effective resistance of two resistors in parallel. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate the effective resistance of resistors in parallel. Let us now investigate a circuit of two resistors in parallel. Resistor R1 has got a resistance of 10 ohms and resistor R2 has got a resistance of 12 ohms. I've already recorded the current and voltage readings. Let's take a look. The current through resistor R1 is 0.42 amperes. The current through resistor R2 is 0.35 amperes. The total current in the circuit is 0.77 amperes and the potential difference across the parallel combination is 4.2 volts. What do these results show us about parallel circuits and what conclusions are we able to come to? Current divides up in a parallel circuit. The branch with the lower resistance carries the higher current. The current in the main circuit, that is from the battery, is equal to the sum of the current through the branches of the circuit. And the potential difference across the parallel branches is the same. We can write these conclusions for currents, resistance, and potential difference across a parallel circuit mathematically. Let me show you how. Firstly, we look at the relationship between the current in the branches and the main circuit. Here we can see that the total current in the circuit is equal to the sum of the individual branches. Therefore, I total must equal I1 plus I2. Now from Ohm's law, we know that I is equal to V, the potential difference, divided by R, the resistance. Therefore, if we now substitute V over R for I, we can now write down V over R effective is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2. If we now divide through by V, we now get an equation that reads, 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. This formula gives the effective resistance of two resistors in parallel. Now this formula is very important, so please write it down. 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, where R1 and R2 are the values of the resistors in the parallel combination. So let's try a few problems to make sure that we understand how to use the formula. 
make sure that you have your calculators handy. Calculate the resistance of two resistors connected in parallel. R1 has a value of 200 ohms and R2 has a value of 250 ohms. Well, the first thing we must do is write down our formula. 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Let's now substitute in the values for R1 and R2. So it's 1 over 200 ohms plus 1 over 250 ohms. Use your calculators and you should be able to get an answer of 0, 0,009 ohms to the minus 1. Now here is an important part of the problem. What we have just calculated is 1 over R effective. We need to now calculate what the value of R effective is. Please watch what I do carefully. If 1 over R effective is equal to 0, 0,009 ohms to the minus 1, then what we must do to get R effective is find the inverse of 0, 0,009. Using your calculators, you will find that the inverse of this value is 111 ohms. So to conclude, the effective resistance of these two resistors connected in parallel is 111 ohms. As you can see, these calculations are a little bit more complicated than calculating the effective resistance for resistors in series. We must remember to invert the expression so that we determine the value of the effective resistance and not just its reciprocal value. Before we try another calculation, let us take a careful look at the value we've just obtained. We know that the two resistors have values of 200 ohms and 250 ohms and they were connected in parallel and that the effective resistance is 111 ohms. This shows us that connecting resistors in parallel reduces the effective resistance on the circuit and therefore it will increase the current in the circuit. This is a very important characteristic of parallel circuits. Let's investigate it on our circuit board. Here I have my electric circuit with a light bulb in the main part of the circuit and two resistors in parallel. Watch closely what happens to the brightness of the bulb when I close the switch. Now what do you think will happen to the brightness of the bulb if I connected another resistor into my parallel circuit? Well let's see if you're right. Well, here is my third resistor connected in parallel into my circuit. I'm now going to close the switch, and I want you to have a look at the brightness of this bulb. Can you see any difference in the brightness of the bulb compared to our previous experiment? Well, I'm sure you will all agree that the bulb is glowing more brightly with the third resistor in parallel than it was in our previous experiment. Now what does this observation prove? Well let's go back to our circuit board. This shows us that the current in the main circuit has increased. Therefore it confirms our finding that the effect of resistors connected in parallel is to decrease the resistance of the circuit thus increasing the current. Let me close the switch again and look at the brightness of the bulb. It is interesting to note that the effective resistance of a parallel combination is less than either of the two resistances of the resistors in parallel. Let's go back to our paper graphic. Can you see that my effective resistance of 111 ohms is less than the 200 ohms of R1 and the 250 ohms of R2? The big question is, why does this happen? Well, to answer that question, let me remind you of an experiment we carried out using the cross-sectional area of a conductor. We used a length of thick copper wire and measured the current passing through it. And then we exchanged the thick copper wire for the same length of thin copper wire and measured the current passing through the thin wire. 
we found that thicker copper wire allowed a greater current to pass through it. This experiment proved that a length of thick copper wire has less resistance than the same length of thin copper wire. In other words, the resistance decreases as the wire's diameter increases. The less the resistance, the thicker the wire. In a parallel circuit, as we increase the number of branches in the circuit, we are effectively increasing the diameter of the wire through which the current can pass. So therefore, the effective resistance of the circuit decreases and the battery supplies a greater current. Now let's try a last problem and this time we're going to use the concept of basic fractions to help us calculate our answer. Two identical resistors are connected in parallel with each other. Their effective resistance is 10 ohms. What is the resistance for each resistor? Well, let's write down the information. They've told us that the effective resistance is equal to 10 ohms. Let's write down our basic equation. 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now let's substitute into the problem. 1 over 10 is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now if R1 and R2 are identical and using the concept of basic fractions, then 1 over 10 must equal 2 over R. I now need to get R on its own, so I must now invert the problem. 10 over 1 is equal to R over 2. Calculating for R, we cross multiply. 10 multiplied by 2, and that gives us a value of 20 ohms. So therefore, R1 equals R2 equals 20 ohms. Before we wrap up, let's summarize what we know about parallel circuits. Current divides up in a parallel circuit. The branch with the lower resistance carries the higher current. The current in the main circuit, that is from the battery, is equal to the sum of the current through the branches of the circuit. The potential difference across the parallel branches is the same. We can calculate the effective resistance of two resistors in parallel using the formula 1 over R effective equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Connecting resistors in parallel reduces the effective resistance of the circuit and increases the current in the circuit. And lastly, the effective resistance is always less than either of the two resistances in parallel. In our next lesson, we will do many more circuit calculations, and this time using a variety of mathematical formulae. Until then, thank you and goodbye.